Hi, I'm Robin, the Sudoku guy, with another session on how to solve Sudoku puzzles. Now, in the first few sessions, we covered steps that you could take in order to solve it easily. And uh, today I'm going to continue with more steps. We, what we did in the last sessions was that we learned about TMB, which is, means top, middle, bottom rows of these three blocks. We learned about LCR, meaning left, center, and right of these three blocks. And by doing that system, we learned how to get lots of new numbers. And then we learned how to look for a row, a column, or a block with only two cells left. Now, today, we move on to something a little bit more. I mentioned uh, uh, matching pairs. And I want to show you something here, the, the power of matching pairs. They're amazing. And actually, I'll be showing you a lot more about matching pairs as we go. On this particular section here, and all we're looking at is these three, blo these three blocks. Forget this down here for the time being. Uh, is that when I look at this, uh, let's say a ones, well, there's only one one, let's go to the twos. We have a two in the middle, we have a two on the top, and therefore over in this block, the two has to be there or there. Now, uh, there's no three, so let's go to fours. Uh, fours, well, there's a, f the, there's a four that could be up in here. We could have a four up there, like there or there. Okay, now fives. Well, this is interesting. Here's a five on the top. Here's a five in the middle of this block. The five has to go in the bottom of this block, there or there. And guess what? We have a matching pair. And that means that no other little number can go in those two cells, and that's very important. So that's, that's one thing I'd like to point out. Now let's show you something else about matching pairs. If you look very carefully, you can see here we have a 4, 9 in this block on the bottom. Here we have a 4 and a 9 in the middle of this block. Here, therefore, based on uh, top, middle, bottom system, uh, bottom, middle, top, and the 9 has to be here, and we've got another matching pair, which means, again, you cannot put any other little numbers in there. Now let's look at another one, the six and the seven. Here we have, here's the six and the seven in the middle. Here's the six and the seven at the bottom. Therefore, the six and the seven in this block that doesn't have a six and seven has to go up in here. So you have a six, seven up in here as well. So we have another matching pair. Isn't that amazing? Now the matching pairs can be very powerful. Let's have a look at something else here. Whoa, yes. Now let's look at the 8 over here. There's only one 8, but it cannot go there, and it cannot go there because that's spoken for now. So the only place it can go in this block is down here. Now that we have two 8s, a top and a bottom, the 8 has to go in here. Now let's look at the 1. It's somewhat similar. The 1 has nowhere to go except up in this block, except up in here or here. So it could go there or there. And when you've got a bottom here and a top there, the one has to be in the middle of this block, so you've got another matching pair. Isn't that amazing? Now, we're going to show you a video where you can see that if you've got a matching pair and there's only one cell left, let's count up, see what's missing. One, two, it's a three. Well. That's interesting. Now, we know a three can't go in here anywhere because it's all taken up now. A three can't go in here because there's no room for it. It has to go up there and in there, so we have another matching pair. Now, with a three down here and a three up here, this row here has a matching pair. So that's briefly what I wanted to share with you on this little diagram. But down here, let's look at this one. This is really neat. Again, it's an example of where the uh, matching pair can be very powerful. These, assuming these little numbers are all correct in a puzzle, if suddenly a 5 turns up here, what does this do? Well, first of all, 
you can get rid of that five. Gone. And that leaves us with a 3-7-3-7 three, seven, three, seven matching pair. Now, and this is something that I'm going to cover a little bit more later as well, what does that mean? It means that in this block, any other three or any other seven can be eliminated, taken away, removed. So let's look at the sevens. Well, here's a seven that's not part of that, so we can get rid of that seven. And what that does is it, make this, it makes this a nine, and we can cross off that nine. That nine can go. Okay? Whoops. Okay. Now, let's look at the threes. Is there any other three in this block? Yes, there is. There's a three over here. This three can go, which makes this a real big four. Now, that real big four means that this four cannot be a four, and so this becomes a one. And that four also means that this four cannot be a four, so this becomes your five. And you've got all those numbers just because you notice that this five came on the scene and made that a matching pair. Stand by, we've got another clip for you coming right now. Now we just did the fives in here. Guess what? Time to do the sixes. And that's interesting because here we have a right. Down here we have a center. In this block it has to be on the left. It has to go there. Well, you know it had to go there. There's always more than one way to, to go on these puzzles. That six means we've got the full block now done. And that cancels out this six. Now we before when we were doing the six six here, we only put them in two cells, and that's the only two places a six could go. Now that that six is there, this becomes a six. Now, what's the ramification of that? Got to remember, what's the ramification of everyone? What's the ram? Okay, we have a top, we have a middle, we have a bottom, so that becomes a six. Now, would you believe, in this block, we've only got one left. Let's count up. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's a seven. Fantastic. Very good. And because we've got that seven, what's the ramification of that? Seven, seven, this becomes a seven. And because of that seven, wow, we've got all kinds of other things that can happen, but we'll see. I'll let go on a bit further. There's so many different routes you can take. If you get two people doing the same puzzle, they'll go different routes every time. Okay, let's now put on to the sevens here. Seven, 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 they're all there. Eights. There's only one eight, so we'll leave it there for the time being. Nine, we have a left, we have a right, we have a center. So we'll go on to these uh, vertical columns now. These vertical columns with the one, we've got all the ones. Twos, we've got two twos. We have a bottom, we have a left here. Uh, we have a center here. So a two can go either there or there. Wow. Okay. Uh, threes. We have a three here in the center. We have a three on the right. So the three has to go here. So that be if that becomes a three, this automatically comes a six. See the advantage of putting two little numbers only in two cells? It really helps. That becomes your six. We have a center, left. Okay, well, let's do fours now. Fours are done. Fives, fives. We have the fives are done too. Left, center, right. Sixes, well, because of this little procedure down here, I think we've got the sixes. Yes, right, left, center. Sevens, we have a center, left. It has to be on the right, so it goes over here. It's the only place it can go. Now that we've only got one left in here, it's easy to work it out. Let's do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's an eight. Let's put the eight in. Now, by putting that eight in, let's see what the ramifications are for that. Here we have a center, here we have a left, it has to be over here, and guess what? This becomes a matching pair. Now let's look at the nines. We have, we have all the nines, left, right, and center. Now we come to the spot where we look for rows, columns, and blocks that have only got two or one or two cells left. And it's interesting, I have just noticed something Let's just do these three blocks first. When you have two empty cells, and there's a 2-8 on that cell, this automatically becomes a 2-8 as well. That's neat. 
Now, in this block here, there's only two cells left. So if that's a 2,8, this becomes a 2,8. Oh, boy. Now, in this block here, we only have two cells empty, that one and that one. So that becomes a 2,8,2. Two. Now, this block has only got two cells empty, so this becomes a 2,8. This is unbelievable, because you know what's going to happen? Down the road, it's going to go boom, 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 very fast. Fine. Let's see now. We'll push on a bit further. Um, oh, let me see. Oh, here's a, here's a row down here that only got one left. wonder what that is. Oh, I think it's a two. One. Two. There's no two. So we put a two in here. Now, what's the ramification of that? Look at this. Wow. This is going to be so much fun. Watch this. That two means that this becomes a three. Okay. That three means that this becomes a two. Okay. Now there's only one left in this column, so this becomes a three. Center, left, right. Because of this two, we could look at this. Two, two, two. There, there's a left, center, a right. This becomes a 2 as well. And this, therefore, becomes an 8, which we could have worked out another way, but it's working like this very well. That becomes your 8. Because that's an 8, this becomes a 2. This is fun. Because that's a 2, this becomes an 8. Gee, the power of magic, uh, of uh, match, uh, matching pairs. Because that's an 8, this becomes a 2, and because that's a 2, this becomes an 8. Wasn't that incredible? That doesn't happen very often, but it just so happens that on this puzzle it did. Fantastic. We've got a lot of numbers just because we understood that two empty cells can mean a matching pair. Now, in this row here, or this column here rather, we've only got one left. I wonder what it is. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Is there an eight there? Well, let me see now. There's a six, seven. It's got to be an eight. That's the one. Well, that was interesting. Now that we have an eight there, what's left in this block? Well, that's very simple to work out. I think it's a, it's a one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a seven. And we can check ourselves by saying left, right, center. That's good. That's working out. We're getting close. This is getting fun. Okay, now we've got only one left in this block. And I think if I count them up, it's one, two is missing. Therefore, in this block or in this row, you can do both ways. There's so many ways to go. You can find out that this has to be an eight. And I believe that that is it. We solved it. Fantastic. Have a yourself a smile. You can feel happy about that. We've only covered the very, very easy lessons. Very easy puzzles, I mean. And there's many, many more techniques and, and uh, hints and procedures that I'd love to share with you. Oh, by the way, one more thing. Tell your friends of all ages about Sudoku Guy. So that's it. Bye for now. Well, that was interesting. I hope you learned something from that. I have a question that's come in, and I said Bob from somewhere, and he asks, um, what about subscribing? Do you have to pay to, to, to subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, sudokuguy.com? Uh, it's free. If you want to watch all the videos, there's 80, or more than 80 of them. They're all free, no cost at all. Anyway, stand by, we've got something exciting coming up right now.